hello everyone. I just did a, a short intro in, in my native language. Um, I'm Miroslav. I work for Unique uh, Venture Clubs. Uh, we'll get into what, what that is uh, shortly. And uh, the topic today is uh, DAOs. What are DAOs? How they function? Um, and, and, and so on. Uh, I do have a presentation prepared. Name a presentation. Uh, <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, in, in the meantime, uh, maybe we can have a bit of an open discussion. Um, we've heard the term DAO mentioned today uh, a couple of times. Um, has, does anyone have experience? Is it, are we okay? Okay, well, we'll continue. Um, is anyone a part of a DAO currently? Okay, we have one person, two maybe. Uh, I did hear some, some people are interested as well. Um, but actually, um, before we, we get into the, the formal presentation, um, DAOs are you know, this, this, this concept that recently emerged. Um, it's something that has grown exponentially in the past year or so. Um, something that is still being defined as we move along. So there, there isn't necessarily a clear um, setup, let's say. No, no DAO in, in, in theory is, 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 no two DAOs are the same. Um, oh, and we actually got into the first slide. Uh, I just wanted to, to, to qualify my experience by saying um, I'm, I'm by no means a deep expert given this is uh, still an evolving space. Uh, however, um, in my current uh, role in, in, at Unique Venture Clubs, uh, I did learn a fair bit about this space. Um, so, so I'm more than happy to, to discuss with you um, my findings. Um, as we know, uh, DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. Uh, on the one hand, it does sound self-explanatory. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's, it's quite important to dissect what this really means. Um, this is a definition that made most sense to me. Um, so we can go through it and, and then dissect it a bit further. Uh, essentially, DAOs are a, a blockchain-based system uh, that lets people coordinate and govern themselves by being mediated by a series of self-executing rules deployed on a public blockchain with uh, decentralized governance. Uh, it's, it's quite a mouthful, so we can, uh, we can break that down a little bit if I know how to work this. Okay, good. Um, so we have, uh, let, let's split it by words. Uh, we have decentralized, um, essentially no need for uh, central government uh, intervention, uh, meaning having uh, a, a group or community uh, governing um, you know, a certain project or, or, or movement. Um, and, and, and so, you know, eliminating that central authority, uh, so to speak. And then autonomous um, is actually where the technology comes in. Um, so, so, so the idea here is we have smart contracts that are, uh, you know, tied to blockchains and essentially um, conduct the actions uh, on behalf of the DAO. Um, so this means you know, that this, in a sense, eliminates um, human error or human activity. It's, it's a replacement. It's, it's really leveraging uh, technology to, to, to make decisions um, or to action decisions, rather. And we'll get into to, to more of that shortly. Uh, this slide uh, is, is actually uh, one, one I'm quite uh, you know, interested to share. Uh, I, I do, I haven't mentioned uh, previously, I have a, a background in sociology. Um, so generally, you know, the concept of organizational structures and, and how they've evolved over time is, is, is of interest to me, uh, particularly, you know, from, from an academic uh, standpoint. So in, in doing, you know, some research and, and considering how organizations are structured, um, we've come across this, this flow chart or this model of, um, you know, past organizational structures and, and to present, starting with tribes. Um, tribes, uh, well, well back into history, evolved uh, into nations, nation states. Um, 
which then you know transitioned into to corporations and now this this new idea um, of, of decentralized autonomous organizations um, there's a caveat to this and it's it's really important to mention that uh, no no stage here uh, replaces the next necessarily um, this is the, this is um, uh, kind of a, a natural progression where you do have um, uh, previous uh, attributes associated in the next step. So um, we're, we're not saying here that a certain step is, is better than the next. We're just saying it's, it's, it's sort of a, an involvement uh, into, into the next. So we, we, of course, still have you know, tribe uh, structures and, and nations, as we know, um, corporations and and we do believe that the next phase in this uh, are DAOs. And uh, j just to note here that, you know, something like uh, a tribe and tribal uh, kind of lessons are uh, today more important than ever. So um, just, just to keep it in mind. And, and one other thing, uh, the, every, every subsequent uh, step here is, is in some way adding value to the previous and, and evolving. Um, so, so, so let's, let's think about it this way. Um, so how, how do DAOs work? Uh, getting a bit more into the, 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 the setup. Um, the most important part about a DAO is the smart contract itself. Um, and so essentially the, the, the contract establishes um, the rules of the organization. Uh, and it all and is also responsible for holding the the group's treasury. Um, in theory, um, there, there are you know different DAO-like setups today. Um, we'll, we'll get we'll get into more of like the the difficulties of, of setting up a DAO. But um, you know you 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 have people kind of classifying things as DAOs, but don't actually have treasuries tied to smart contracts, etc. So the idea here is that it's all founded uh, on the smart contract. Um, and then once the contract goes live uh, on the blockchain, that's it. Um, and, and if rules are to be changed um, within the, the boundaries of the, the DAO, DAO's activity and movement, um, this has to go through um, a vote or a proposals need to be created. It needs to be voted upon. And the idea here is that the majority rules um, and so you know you you won't always have everyone in a DAO satisfied if that's the case um, but but the idea here is that every subsequent change um, beyond like we said what's what's already coded in the in the um, smart contract needs to needs to pass through the community essentially um, and then leading to I suppose the final point uh, if someone does try to manipulate or, or act on a way which contradicts uh, the logic, the rules of the code, um, it will, of course, fail. Um, and, and just a, a further note, as we touched on, since the treasury um, is, is also uh, defined by the smart contract, um, funds cannot be manipulated with or spent by members of the group. Uh, it has to go through a, a, an approval uh, form um, in, in, in the form of a vote. Um, and then actually uh, what's once again kind of profound and, and interesting about DAOs is that once uh, a vote is passed, um, the transaction or the, the action um, that, that uh, goes after uh, is, is authorized automatically. That's where the, the automation comes in. Um, and, and, and that's the the, the beauty of not having people act on decisions once a decision is made. Um, so there are, of course, uh, benefits, uh, advantages, or drawbacks uh, to DAOs. Um, as, I, as I previously mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, this is still an evolving space, so um, these pros and cons are likely to to change uh, over time for better or worse. Um, but these are the, the, the key points that I'd like to touch on today. Uh, and of course, the, the emojis are, are my favorite part. Um, so 
DAO solved the, the principal agent dilemma. Uh, this might be a, a known kind of economic concept to most, but if there is anyone who, who, who isn't familiar with, with this, it's essentially um, when one person or entity has control, um, well, has the, the, the power to act on behalf of another person or entity, um, which could directly impact that original uh, person or entity. Um, this, this opens up to um, uh, manipulation and, 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 and uh, essentially uh, acting on your own interest. Um, and so with DAOs, as we touched on, given that a community makes decisions, um, this, this dilemma is, is eliminated. Uh, it's a trustless organization. And um, actually, I'd like to uh, define the, the term trustless a bit more. The first time I kind of came across it, it, it didn't make sense to me. Um, trustless essentially means the fact that you don't, the, the, the factor of trust does not exist in this, in this realm. Um, meaning that because we're tied or because the DAO is tied by the smart contract and because we, we know the rules of engagement, um, I don't need to trust a member of the community not to act um, uh, ill-willingly, let's say. Um, so so, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a big benefit there. Um, also, what, what I'd like to point uh, on that note is that uh, the beauty of DAOs is uh, you don't have to know the people uh, in, in the community. It is truly a global uh, um, setup and, and organization. Um, at, at its core, it's like an internet native uh, association or, or organization structure, uh, which is quite profound. Um, it's transparent, uh, open source. It's something we hear a lot about in, in blockchain, uh, given you know there's there's a, a track record of, of everything um, on the public ledger. Uh, this is also something that excites people uh, and and gives them the confidence to know exactly what is going on um, in the DAO. Um, and then decisions are actioned instantly once votes are passed. This is something we touched on previously as well. Um, there are drawbacks, and uh, let's, let's be objective. You know, it's, uh, we, we can't just promote without uh, uh, being honest about uh, some, some, some cons here. Um, one is that developers cannot guarantee the security of a DAO, um, if you do have open source code, it's it's open to all. And you know, um, right now development is 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 advancing and things are getting better, so to speak. But um, you, you'd be fooled if someone told you that uh, something is uh, surely and and absolutely safe. Um, and we, there there is an example. Maybe I won't, I won't get into it uh, in great detail, but. Um, there, there was a DAO, the DAO, um, which, which got hacked. It was, it was a big story. You can, you can check it out. Um, and in fact, it was open source code and the hacker found a loophole uh, in the system. So uh, ju just something to be aware of um, when, when doing your own research. Um, another point that's, that's quite important and we've heard in, in a couple of presentations uh, throughout today is is uh, the the legality um, or you know regu regulatory framework um, or lack thereof. Um, so so it's not yet accounted for in a legal sense in most places. What that means is um, you, you, your your DAO might not require you know uh, like a legal entity. Let's say if it's it's truly decentralized. Um, uh, how, what, what are the implications of this in the context of a nation state, so to speak? Um, it's something, that this, this is a, a big friction uh, point in not only these types of organizations, but across you know, crypto as a whole. Um, and uh, actually, I, just a, a quick note, uh, I, I was on a call with uh, an Australian lawyer the other day who gave a lot of good information, which I'm, I'd like to share here. Um, and I was told, you know, like in Australia, uh, you have um, labor laws, right? And if, and if you wish to work for a DAO as, as you know, your, your primary earning, 
Um, in, according to the Australian labor law, uh, you should be remunerated in or paid out in their local fiat currency. Um, and so if you are working in a DAO and you're being uh, rewarded via you know, token payment, it's, it's, it's quite questionable where, where the legality lies there. Um, and then also in terms of you know, taxes, et cetera. So the, the legal framework, um, and it is, has to be developed, and it is, of course, by per nation uh, kind of uh, uh, state framework. Um, and then the third point, um, which is quite important, um, is quorums not always reached. What this means, um, if you have a DAO, which is uh, fully equal, and you have everyone, um, everyone has the, 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 uh, the power to vote. Um, some recent studies and research has shown that actually um, the, the rate of voting is, it can be fairly low. Um, you don't have people, not all people are equally engaged, let's say like that. Um, and so that's actually a big challenge in, in this whole discourse and um, uh, in, in, in this whole space is how to first have more people engaged uh, in a DAO in terms of making votes and de facto making um, decisions. Um, and secondly, is an equal, a purely equal uh, structure um, optimal? And we'll get into that uh, a bit later. Uh, over here, uh, I won't take up too much time. Uh, it's just uh, a, a, a bit of a table uh, of the comparisons of uh, DAOs and, and traditional organizations, um, split into five categories. Um, so organizational structure, uh, as we touched on, it's more democrat democratic, uh, flat, equal opportunities. Um, traditional organizations are, for the most part, hierarchical. Um, voting, as we touched on, is, is essential in DAOs for any decision making, whereas uh, in traditional organizations, um, you can have structures where sole parties um, are implementing these changes. Um, governance, as we said, uh, is community based, um, whereas in traditional organizations, you can have like a, a board of directors making decisions on behalf of all. Um, not saying that's good or bad. Just, just pointing out the, the differences. Um, transparency, we touched on that um, on the DAO side, uh, but on the traditional organization side, um, things can be kept more private. Um, and once again, um, this, this, could be, this could be beneficial as well in terms of an organizational structure, but uh, something to consider. Um, and then the final point, handling of services. Um, DAOs are automated, as we said, through smart contracts, whereas uh, in traditional organizations, you'll maybe have a process of decision making or voting, and then um, subsequently it will require human handling, which can be prone to, to, to errors. Um, but that's, that's, that's for a different topic. Uh, over here, just a, a quick snapshot of what the DAO landscape looks like. and. Um, this is only um, uh, a, a very small amount or percent of, of what's happening on the market as a whole. Uh, you have different types of DAOs, uh, protocol DAOs, investment DAOs, grant DAOs, service DAOs, media DAOs, social DAOs, philanthropy DAOs, music DAOs, collector DAOs, gaming DAOs, uh, gaming guilds, etc. cetera. So, um, the, the scope and like the parameters of the possibilities within this space are uh, subject to one's level of creativity, meaning um, there are no limits uh, to, to, to how organizations can be structured within a DAO setup. And um, of course, what's most important in any of these is, is what the, the goal is at hand, what, what is the aim of the community. That's, that's, where, uh, that's, that's how things start fitting into these different categories. Um, but just, just to show you that there's a, a wide spectrum of things going on. Uh, a market overview, uh, coming from a, a business development uh, 
standpoint, uh, th this, is, this is what usually excites me most, uh, which, which I'd like to share. Um, so as of May 2022, or March, excuse me, um, there was roughly $9.5 billion held in Dow treasuries uh, across all networks. Um, actually, uh, I, I should have maybe uh, mentioned where I get or where I got this information from. Um, uh, the source is uh, a site platform called DeepDAO. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that a bit further. Um, and it's important to note because this whole space is moving uh, very quickly, um, these figures are constantly changing uh, with, with market fluctuation. So uh, although you know, this 9.5 billion held in Dow Treasuries in March 2022 uh, stands, today it's, it's different. Um, so you can actually check that out. I'll, I'll share the site with you later. Um, and of this total uh, held in Dow Treasuries, uh, Ethereum, uh, as you can imagine, um, is, is leading uh, in this space. Um, at that time, they had 8.2 billion. Um, and then the, the, the next uh, blockchain that, 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 that held in treasuries uh, after Ethereum was uh, Solana, or is Solana, uh, with 1.3 billion. Um, this grand total of roughly 10 billion um, is 10 times greater than what it was only one year ago. Uh, when it was just under a billion dollars, so clearly there's there's uh, there's there's momentum uh, in this space. However, still very early. Um, in 2018, uh, there were roughly 10 DAOs formed. Um, by 2020, there were nearly 200, uh, and now there are over 5,000. Um, once again, a caveat is uh, that. There are DAOs being formed on a daily basis, uh, and the source of this information um, is valid, uh, but should be taken with, with a grain of salt, as, uh, as it's actually quite hard for people who are aggregating you know, this information, going through blockchains, following uh, wallet information, etc. cetera. It's, it's hard to keep up with, with the pace of the market. And so just you know, consider these numbers, but uh, they, they are higher. Um, Ethereum houses more than 4,200 DAOs at the time of you know, the, the, the information that was sourced. Um, comparatively, Solana ecosystem is around 140 DAOs and Cardano around 10, but of course this is growing. Um, and actually DAO memberships um, have quadrupled in the last year. Uh, so right now you can say there are roughly 2 million DAO members across all of crypto. This is uh, just a, a nice little visual um, of the top uh, treasury size, or the treasuries with the top, uh, excuse me, DAOs with the top treasuries um, as of April 2022. Um, you have most, as you can see here, you have Uniswap, BitDAO, Lido, etc. cetera, um, most of which are protocol DAOs, some investment DAOs. Um, and this is actually uh, also shifted quite significantly in the last month um, so if you, if you check out the, the website I'm about to, to, to discuss in the next slide, um, you, you, you can see where the, the information varies. And that, that actually leads to um, what I previously commented on, DeepDAO. You can check it out, deepdao.io. Um, it's, in my opinion, as far as my research led me, is the, the top place for finding DAO-related analytics. Um, over here, I've just taken a couple of snapshots of, of their dashboard. Um, so you can see, um, actually, as of the other day, it was 10.5 billion uh, total in treasuries. They have around 5,000 DAOs or so that they're tracking and constantly looking to add um, into their platform. Um, and you can see there's numbers around how many people are voting and so on. Um, so feel free to check that out. It, it certainly helps me with my research. So going now a bit deeper, uh, how to actually create a DAO. Um, you know, that's the main question everyone's having for those who are keen to create but don't know how. It's actually, it's, it's a fairly nuanced and complicated process at this time. 
Um, well, first off, you need to know how to put together a smart contract. There are now tools being developed um, to, to, to allow people not to have to know that knowledge of coding. Um, but beyond that, there are several elements of a DAO. Um, we touched on treasury, um, so having requiring a multi-signature wallet of sorts uh, is, is important. We've, we've commented on voting and governance structures. Um, and right now, frankly, um, there, and, and by the way, also communication. Uh, it's important for communities to stay engaged um, and understand you know, what's, what, what's, what's going on. Um, so right now, there are many tools out there. Some are more Web 2-like. Um, some are evolving into the Web3 space, um, but it's actually quite complicated to kind of consolidate um, all of this. Um, you, you get lost very easily um, in, in everything going on in the space. So um, the company that I work for, Unique Venture Clubs, is looking to help solve a lot of this. Um, this is us. Uh, this, is, this is our team. Um, we, we're, we're actually, uh, I must say, if, if they're watching live stream, if, if there is a live stream, hello. Um, we're, we're made up of a very tight-knit uh, team. Uh, and as, as we know in crypto, team, team structures are very important when it comes to any project. Um, so we have Alex, who's our CEO and uh, heading our product side. Uh, extensive experience. Uh, in, in various fields, uh, has been in Web3 since 2016. Uh, a lot of game development experience, IT, complex payment uh, solutions. Uh, so so he's, he's a core member. Uh, we also have Martin, who's uh, Chief Business Development Officer, my, my dear colleague. Um, and he's, uh, he's the, let's say, the alpha of crypto knowledge uh, in our business, uh, has, has done extensive research in the space. Uh, has done investing in the space, is part of a VC fund. Um, we also have uh, Urosh, who is uh, our CTO, um, and he's, uh, he's the, the mastermind of, of everything um, regarding you know, the platform itself and how it functions. Uh, he's a professor as well uh, at the University of Belgrade uh, Faculty of Organizational Sciences, uh, so, so one, uh, another uh, core member and contributor. Uh, and then we have Stipe as well. He's our uh, operations, strategy, investments uh, director. Uh, 15 plus years of uh, management consulting experience um, and uh, uh, an enthusiast uh, uh, of, of the space. So having these core members in, in these different kind of areas, both academic, commercial, is, is quite a nice uh, fix, uh, fit, I would say, in terms of uh, uh, team dynamic. And then we also have you know, a wider team, myself included, uh, around 25 of us um, across Serbia, um, Croatia, Bulgaria, um, remotely as well, some, some colleagues uh, in, in, on other continents as well. Uh, so, so yes, a very, very strong team dynamic. But what, more importantly, what are we trying to do? Um, we're trying to build a platform that en enables individuals to quickly and securely create uh, or join on-chain um, organizations. So DAOs, but we like to call them clubs. Um, and the reason, we'll, we'll get into the reason for that, but essentially, you know, we're, we're trying to offer a fully customizable experience. Um, we're trying to make it, you know, it is trustless, uh, secure, uh, and so on. We have a, a bit of a roadmap here, uh, which, which we've drawn out. Um, we were actually a part of uh, Solana um, hack Hackathon uh, in uh, May of 2021, last year, uh, where we won. And, uh, and then subsequently uh, started developing the whole project, hiring people, investments, and so on. Uh, in December of last year, uh, we launched our token. Right now, um, we're in a so-called private beta uh, stage. So what that means, we're, we're not yet mainnet uh, on Solana, by the way, that's where we're building. Um, we're, we're on the devnet right now and being selective with um, who we're allowing to test out our platform and give feedback at this stage. Um, 
very soon uh, in June. Uh, we're looking to, to launch our public beta where anyone is allowed to, to check out our platform on Solana's DevNet, of course. Uh, so you do need a, a Solana wallet to, to attach. And then um, in July, we're going mainnet and, and, and we're very excited for that. I did touch on our vision uh, briefly and um, you know, our value propositions are um, that we're looking to, to create, uh, well, we're, we're looking to service people uh, quickly, uh, have people be able to quickly create DAOs in a simple manner with no knowledge of code or coding, um, fully customizable as I touched on. Um, a key here is multiple governance models. Um, so we believe that as, as mentioned previously, no two DAOs are or should be the same. And so we want to give people the, the opportunity to create as many different types of governance structures as possible. Um, and beyond that, um, we also believe that um, financial contribution to a DAO should not, should not only be tied to, to governance power. Um, so, you know, you, you do have, mo for example, you have maybe people who are willing to or, or wanting to invest big money into a DAO, but don't want to necessarily be involved with, you know, the day-to-day -day activity or the decision making of, um, of the group itself. Let's say you're a DAO that wants to buy and sell NFTs. Um, you, a, a person with a big fund, uh, might not have the knowledge of NFT flipping, uh, but might trust someone in the DAO to, to, to have that know-how. And so um, we've, we've actually split the, the, the concept of um, a governance um, and, and financials, uh, which, which we'll get into shortly. And, and this is just a, a visual of the different types of DAOs that we're, we're looking to allow people to create, uh, essentially any, any type of uh, organizational structure. So today, um, we're mostly or only kind of uh, tailored around digital assets uh, on our platform. Um, so we're allowing people to create DAOs where they can buy, sell NFTs, um, where they can buy, sell uh, fungible tokens as well. Um, gaming is, is a big industry, something we've been hearing about today. Um, and, and, and so allowing people to kind of make gaming guilds, gaming communities where they can pull funds together and and buy in-game items as a group. Um, and then also metaverse type of clubs uh, where people can purchase things uh, in, in the metaverse as well collectively. Uh, but once again, the important point here is that we want to leave it up to you how you wish to, to structure your, your club. And then the idea moving forward beyond simply digital assets is also to have uh, DAOs or clubs on our platform um, that are uh, tied specifically to, to in um, real real world assets like you know real estate, art, companies, stocks, and so on. Anything essentially that can be uh, tokenized um, is, is is what we're looking to to move in in the future. So governance, uh, we believe organization organizations' capabilities are directly dependent uh, to structural setup. Um, meaning um, it's how you set up is essentially what your capabilities are. Um, so so we, we on Unique Venture Clubs are introducing three distinctive types of governance models. The first one is um, it's deposit based. So essentially the amount of fund you're investing into the DAO is the amount that's correlated to your governance power um, directly. The second, uh, it, it's, I'll, I'll go in a flip order, um, which I'd like to touch on is assigning roles or a role-based club. Um, so essentially, we've created a, a system where you can create various types of uh, roles that aren't necessarily tied to your financial contribution um, in the club. Uh, and, and we'll get into that. And then also the third is an NFT-based um, governance model where, for example, if you have uh, an NFT collection um, and you own 
one NFT of that collection, you one NFT equates to one, one vote, or two NFTs equate to two votes. So, so that's actually, you know, quite an interesting space uh, we're we're heading into. So the problem there there are problems with these general DAO structures as we know them, as I touched on previously. Um, there's a lack of quorum. Um, you don't, in many cases, you don't have proposals passing because people are simply not active. Um, not enough interest uh, from members. Um, and then not enough knowledge for many topics. So you have a, a good amount of people that are ready and willing to invest, um, but don't quite know how to engage in the day to day and so on. So this is why we've, we've merged you know, this idea of traditional types. We've taken the, 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 the good parts of traditional organizations and implemented them into DAO-like settings through you know, smart contracts and the blockchain um, to make this hybrid model um, where these clubs, the idea is for them to be most efficient. And actually, the idea here is when you go onto our platform, you can create the most decentralized setup, but then you can also create a more centralized uh, setup, once again, through um, actual you know, smart contracts and, and the blockchain. Um, so, so here are some main or the main uh, roles that we've defined. Um, a founder is the person who creates the club, essentially. Um, and then a member just below um, is one who joins a club. These are, these are two essential points um, in every club. And then a manager role is, is optional. And what this means is maybe I'm find, founding a club, but I have no knowledge in uh, NFT flipping or you know, fungible token flipping. Um, I might trust my friend or know of my friend who's willing to join the club as well, but be the actual day-to-day -day moderator and facilitator or curator of the club. Um, so you can create these various tasks or roles rather um, for, for people in, in, in these clubs. And then of course, we also have custom roles which we're working on, um, essentially trying to make a most customizable experience uh, across the board. Uh, this is a kind of a, a, a bit of a flow chart of how financial execution would look like with various roles, in particular a manager role, which you may or may not ha need to have. Uh, it's, it's not essential. Like we said, it's fully customizable. But essentially, and, and this is kind of a, 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 an idea of where you can see the, the financial rights uh, and, and governance uh, power splits. Um, so you have people who... Uh, fundraise deposits into the treasury. The treasury is where your funds lie. Um, and you know, once they've deposited X amount, in return they get financial rights for the money they, or the funds they put into this. Um, you can have a manager on the side um, who's doing the day-to-day -day activity or flipping of said uh, funds in the treasury. Um, and then you can have a, a fee configuration associated with the person's uh, work uh, in, in this DAO or this club. Um, and then the, there's a distinction here between treasury and vault, which is quite important. Um, so if you were, if, when you purchase digital assets, um, that goes directly into the vault um, as opposed to staying in a treasury. We've, we've split uh, those two. Um, and once you, you liquidate or when you sell um, an asset from a vault, um, the funds of that go into the treasury. So essentially, we're, we're a platform that helps people um, create these different clubs and club structures. Um, and on the back end, we're, um, we're, 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 we're putting the pieces together, so to speak, uh, so you don't have to. Which actually leads to the technology, and I'll be very brief because I'm not uh, the tech expert here. Um, this is um, where, where our clubs are on-chain. Um, um, or are, they're like on-chain DAOs. Um, at the very top is what our front end looks like. Um, essentially our DAP. We just lost it, but that's okay. Uh, oh, okay, we got the other screen. Um, yes, so, so we have at, at the high level, we have our front end, um, 
which is showing you what, what the site looks like and you know, the, the application itself. Um, in the back end, you know, we have this REST API storage database. Essentially, we're storing uh, um, information that's not, uh, that's, that's not necessarily you know, important. It's like a, a profile pic that you put up or tags that you associate your club to or like a description. But the, but the main information um, and the main setup is on the blockchain side. Um, and so we're actually building on top of SBL governance uh, primitives. Um, what is that? That's a program um, that provides the building blocks to create DAOs on Solana. Um, so we're working closely with Solana engineers um, who are leading this, this initiative. And so it's like the, the governance standard of Solana and we're essentially building on top of that. Um, that's that's this, this point right here, and then um, we have our own uh, blockchain program that, that we've been developing, our, our team of developers. Um, and so essentially, um, we're moving towards uh, this model of um, composability and integrations. It's all about fitting you know, the pieces together uh, and keeping it fully customizable in that sense. Uh, as a final uh, point there, I wanted to show you a, a, a preview of um, our platform. Uh, I'm not sure whether we have it, but uh, uh, essentially I was, I was just trying to show you what, what it looks like and the, the UI, UX, um, and the flow of creating um, the club itself. Either way, uh, you can check us out. We do have a YouTube channel called Unique Venture Clubs um, where you can find this video of, of uh, a preview of our, our platform and the flow. Um, and as I said, uh, very shortly you'll be able to access as well. Um, so so we, we look forward to, to having you check it out and uh, maybe share your thoughts as well. And uh, that's, that's it for the presentation. There's just a, a thank you slide at the end. Follow. <laughs>